Hey everyone, Will McReynolds from KP9 Interactive. You're about to watch part two in a series on LiDAR with iOS. Now our company has always made our platform for Android and iOS. So anything you build on any of the studios, uh, Printcast, Showcast, Geocast is available out as soon as you hit save, available on iOS and Android. Now, this particular series is about what you can do with LiDAR if your device has it. Showcast, whatever you design, will still work in I I iOS devices without LiDAR as well as Android. They just won't have the effects associated with them, like vertical tracking like we did in part one, or the uh, hand segmentation or body segmentation occlusion elements like that, right? So this goes right in line with what I've always wanted Showcast to be, to be about, uh, I always wanted kind of cinematic effects for previous uh, storyboarding, things like that, right? Kind of have a green screen without the green screen, have those effects, place objects at actual scale in the environment, and maybe and maybe do even like uh, fan little movies or things for your kids. Like that. I do a lot of uh, fun movies. I've always done that my whole life, right? Do stuff with my kids. This really ties into the name Showcast. It was always about the show, like the movies, the cinema, showing something off. It, it all plays into that realm. And this slider gives those extra couple of features. And so if you have an iOS device and you want to do some uh, uh, with LiDAR and you want to experiment and have some fun, there's just another element that we can do. Our, our passion is always going to stay one build for iOS and Android. But if the device happens to have a couple extra abilities, uh, we'll always strive to add a couple where, where we can if it makes sense for us as a company. Anyway, I can't wait to see what you create. Hop in, check, take a look at things, experiment, have fun, enjoy. Hey everyone, we're gonna go over some body occlusion segmentation today. So right now I've got Worldcast open, I've got Showcast open up actually. If you've never been to the system before, all you have to do is go to studio.worldcast.io uh, and you present with three options, Printcast, Showcast, and Geocast. We're using Showcast right now. Now, this, this uh, series uh, assumes that you've followed a few of the tutorials before or you know the system a little bit more than usual, but I will try to always keep a couple little tutorials in every video I do. So in this case, make sure that when you open up your cast or when you create your cast, you give it a name, but the size of the cast is important in this, okay? So in this case, I have it set to seven feet, and we're gonna go back over this in a, in a minute. So this is the scene that you're created with, minus the box. The box is not in the scene. You're started with a blank scene to begin with. This is just a Sketchfab ob object that I've brought into the scene. Now, this arrow represents you. The arrow that's pointing towards you, this is at the default state of how the system starts off. This is what you would see, just like this right here without the box you would have the arrow pointing towards you. That that represents the user where they're standing, okay? Now I have set to seven feet. Each one of these grid marks, because I have the metric in feet, now if this was meters, inches, centimeters, each square would represent one of those uh, one of those units, okay? In this case, we have set the feet, so each one of these represents one foot. I'm gonna put this box back. Now I have the box set closer to me. So I'm just gonna go save, I'm gonna go check out. I can scan that QR code, share my screen here. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly aim towards this general. So now we see we have this box right where I'd be standing, okay? So let's just go return to studio. Let's push this box back a few feet and go save. Let's bring the phone back up. Let's close this. Let's just refresh it because it's the same URL. We'll do this again. And we'll notice that the box is a lot further from me this time. So before, when I saved it with the box closer to the arrow, it was obviously closer to me and now it's further away from me. So my environment here is a five by five uh, environment that I have to work with, okay? So that's a three foot box, so I have room on each side to play with, but there's where I go. And of course, from the previous story, you can see that the hand segmentation and occlusion would, uh, would work. So let's go over a few of the do's and don'ts of LiDAR. So we're just bring this outside my office for a second. There we go. So we can see it's out there. Now watch this. This is glass right here, right? The LiDAR is bouncing off the glass, so you're not going to be able to get that. But it does understand surfaces that are solid. So we can include that part, but not that part. If I want to take this box and put it on the other side of this, I can easily do that, see? But I won't be able to see it through the glass. Other limitations are bright sunlight environments. If you have a lot of sunlight spilling in, that can impact the way that it tracks and the way that it, it can actually uh, segment or occlude objects, okay? Now, another thing about this is if you have an, a busy environment, you ideally want a big space. You want like a, an empty room. If you're gonna be able to do room replacements or other big scenes, you want that because what can happen is couches and other elements, you might have a, a cool room set up, like a virtual room, and you put it in, in your environment and the ladder will actually uh, uh, start bringing everyday objects into the environment. Let me, let me illustrate this again, using this uh, box. And we'll see how it's gone into the actual object of the couch, right? So we ideally don't, don't want that. If that was a, a, a PNG or a 3D model of a plane, of a, like a, a backing wall, 
the same thing would happen where the everyday objects would would uh, spill out or bleed into. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my desktop as a little staging area and we're going to use Han Solo as our, as our, uh, as our body, okay? So I'm going to go to, go to cast properties. I'm going to change this to inches just because it's going to make sense to, I don't have to touch anything now. Now everything's scaled down to inches. So that box when I resave it, it's going to be a lot smaller and it's going to be, a, this is basically for desktop environment. Now these squares that I talked about before are now in an inch unit, okay? So I'm going to bring this forward and I'm going to go save. We'll just bring my screen up here again. What we'll do is we'll just refresh this because is the, the unit has now changed of the cast size. So if I was to aim at the floor again, just to show you, it will come in really small on the floor because it's now set the inches. So there we go. Now I can just drag that up onto the table anyway. It'll just find this plane. There we go. Okay, so let's take Han Solo. So now a, a regular human is going to work a lot better. You can see that my hand occludes a lot better. This can be a little, I mean, this is a plastic character. It doesn't work as good as a human and there's some features that might be throwing things off. But in this case, let's put Han in front of the box. Why won't you stand? So we can see how it's being, uh, I mean, again, a regular human would work better. This is not ideal uh, and better lighting. As you saw in my video, other video, you can see that it gets my video, uh, it gets my body perfectly. This is having some issues with the plastic and stuff, but it's good enough for illustrative purposes. My biggest challenge is getting this to stand properly. There we go. Now, if I want to see place in an absolute environment, I can take this, look down, and come back over here and place it exactly where I want it, right? And we can see that it's being occluded by the object. If I bring it forward, then segmentation takes over. Better lighting, better uh, models, real humans work a lot better. So it's all, get the right lighting in your environment, that's always key, right? But uh, it does a, it does a really good job of actual bodies. Other objects, it does it's, it's fine. I mean, augmented reality generally includes reality at the best of times. So anything that's usually it's over. To, so usually when an object is in front, it will be always over top of the real world object anyway. So that's that. This is what I'm showing right here is pretty much regular everyday use of AR on any device. The, the object in front will always be in the foreground. This using lidar allows us to get this kind of thing, or use my hand to totally block out the object. You can see that my hand works a lot better than than this, than, uh, than the plastic figure does. All right, so what I've done here is, as I mentioned, I have a five by five area to work here. I have taken my scene and I've placed some elements around and I've printed off this five by five uh, square. This has nothing to do with the tracking at all. I'm not gonna use it until I actually place it. So I'm just gonna uh, share this. Let's place this on my desk. To, uh, share my screen here. All right, so this print is about five by five, and now it's a little, I, I trimmed it a little tight. Uh, it was a little bit thicker, but the idea was to fit this on as close as possible based on the grid system on Worldcast, based exactly on the layout of what you see is what you get. So if you want to do a room layout with this, you'd be able to, uh, I'm illustrating animated objects. Now, the wall is a little bit uh, bigger than five feet. It's the model I grabbed. So you would go in there and actually make that the size you want, or it would be occluded by actual reality. So that's pretty darn close in my books, considering I trimmed that a little tighter. Now let's put Han Solo back in here. And we can see that we have some occlusion and segmentation happening. And now that would work with a regular human as well if uh, again, uh, a person would work a lot better than a plastic model that's bouncing back uh, a certain light, uh, certain reflections but you'd be able to get all these effects happening uh, to create a little scene for pre-visual or storyboarding. And of course that much bigger scale, right? All right, that was part two in a series of LiDAR, iOS and Showcast. Part three coming up is going to be about reflections and the environment on your items, again, using LiDAR. So stay tuned for that one and I can't wait to see what you create.